Hello beautiful people and welcome back to another episode of Subconscious Food. Subconscious Food is all about getting you back into the driver's seat and what I mean by that is giving you the tools, techniques and tips you need to be able to use the thoughts you think, the words you speak or foods you eat and the inspired actions you take in order to manifest your desires or your intentions. Now today I wanted to talk to you about something quite interesting. And the reason why it's interesting is because through spiritual development, through our personal development, sometimes we're not always thinking about the darkness that's within each of us. We're always thinking about the light, but sometimes when we need to get to the light and when we need to shine a light on something, we need to really understand what a light, what we're shining the light onto, because that's the only true way that we can really heal. Now, every single one of us has a lighter part to us and a darker shadow to us. That duality helps us to know the difference between when something feels amazing and when something doesn't feel so good. So without the light, there cannot be any darkness or any appreciation of the dark. And without the appreciation of the darkness, there can't be similarly any appreciation of the beautiful light and that healing light. So I wanted to talk to you about um, our shadow selves what this means and how we can start to work on it. There's a huge amount of information when it comes to our shadows. So I'll start touching on it now and then in some future videos, I can go into more depth. Now, it was interesting. One of the films that um, I definitely enjoyed, I'm very much um, a fan of psychological thrillers anything that kind of provokes the mind to think ahead, to enjoy the creativity of the production, to understand what went into the characters and how the actors have been portraying certain characters. So um, a few months ago I watched Unbreakable and Split for the first time and um, you know, very compelling storyline um, within those films. And I was just amazed and I was wowed by the, um, the creative abilities to show how, and to put a light on some very, very dark shadows, essentially. Because, you know, the main character, if you've never watched it, I won't give too many spoilers away, but essentially shows the different versions of himself and he depicts this through different characters that he portrays. So he even portrays um, a female character. And what it's really interesting, what, what really caught my attention is that the film could be showing us most parallel versions and parallel realities of ourselves because he was completely convinced that every single one of these um, these characters he's portraying um, deserved to have the light whenever they had the light. Um, you know, we're, we're in an age of a mass awakening where lots and lots of people are awakening up from um, the illusion of uh, the material world and we're realizing that as co-creators we have the power to um, create the life that we intend on having and that we dream of having. So um, it's just... Hi Maze. The Maze? Look, look at the camera Maze. Wow. I 
think the message that I really felt from those films um, was that if we don't work on our shadow selves, then whilst one part of us could be totally wholesome, beautiful, loving, full of love and light, our shadow selves, so the other versions of us, um, that sometimes we don't shine a light on, that we that we hide because we're scared it might be rejected in society, we hide because we're fearful of bringing out any pain and suffering, um, they can start to sort of take rein on the way we conduct ourselves and as we know, uh, like attracts like, so when we're taking out something into the world, we're bringing it straight back into us. So it's really important for us to make sure that we shine a light on every single crevice of our being, every single part of us, because when we shine this beautiful light onto every single part of us, because we're part of a collective consciousness, all of the collective consciousness um, evolves and gets stronger and happier and lighter and more beautiful and and more blissful and more abundant so it's a really really exciting opportunity for all of us to play our part in the in the growth and the evolution um, of mankind essentially and of humanity and along the way what we end up um, enjoying is the um, the tranquility and the bliss and the happiness and the love um, that our that's in our hearts as we as we give we receive and the cycle of abundance continues. So some of um, the projections our shadow might um, materialize into are a number of things that each and every one of us, unless you're um, very much up there in the enlightened state, I'm not there yet, I've got much more work to do as I'm sure all of us will on our path and on our journey. So uh, the shadow effect is where I've been really inspired to speak about some of these topics, so thank you Deepak and thank you Marianne for this wonderful, wonderful book uh, that you've created. So some of the projections from our shadow selves, and, and comment down below if any of these you recognize within yourself, maybe when you're not being the best version of yourself, or maybe you just are being, but you know, sometimes these feelings can come up and until you heal them, then they'll continue to be there and, and be part of your cycle is superiority um, and it's this feeling of you should listen to me because I am superior and you should know um, and acknowledge that I am that I'm better than you so if if that one resonates with you just just keep that in your mind's eye for the time being. injustice now I don't necessarily resonate with this one but um, I know a lot of people will resonate with this one, so this one could be a really interesting one for you to, to, to think about. It's really unfair that these things are happening to me. Why does it happen to me? Um, you know, these types of thoughts will run through your head. Why, why am I in this position? And why did that happen to me? And why did this person say that? And you know, that, that victimhood where you just feel as though life is still happening to you and, and not from you. Arrogance is another one where you just feel that, you know, the mere presence of someone is irritating or you don't necessarily feel like you have the space within you to deal deal with someone. They They just bother you and annoy you. So if that one really resonates with you, then just keep that in mind. Defensiveness, I know we definitely, all of us have a sense of defensiveness sometimes, especially if someone has said something to us that maybe we didn't really enjoy, um, you know, it didn't really sit well with us for whatever reason. Um, the shadow can project in this way by by feeling like, you know what, well, I'm not gonna listen to you at all. I don't, I don't want to listen to you. So I'm not gonna listen to you looking up to people, so idealizing people, 
uh, putting them on a pedestal. So thinking about certain people as having these kind of godlike characteristics or thinking that um, a certain person in your life, whether it was your parents, your aunt, your uncle, your brothers, your sisters, are these perfect representations of society and who you really look up to. And that one is quite surprising, but it also can be a shadow because I guess when you look up to someone in such a light, you discard everyone else in your mind. So you, you almost then start to look down on other people who are not that person. And you also start to harbor um, inadequacy within yourself as well because you believe that this person is very superior. So that's quite an interesting one, so keep that in your mind as well. Prejudice. How many people in today's society are so prejudiced against other people? You know, how many times has someone you know said to you, ooh, those people, they're dangerous, or ooh, better watch out for them. That's so prejudiced. That's making an assumption about someone. That's judging someone. That's, you know, trying to say that all people are like that. If this one really resonates with you, then, then, then keep that in mind. Jealousy, another way that our shadow projects itself. Jealousy. You feel very jealous of someone. You feel very envious of someone. It could even take on the form of you worrying about betrayal and your thoughts and your your feelings are that you're worried about someone betraying you or or some sort of trust issue that you might have with someone paranoia is another way our shadow projects itself we can become very paranoid it when we might feel like we're in a situation where um certain situations can't be trusted or someone who says something might not be telling the truth so we become very paranoid about it we may feel like someone's out to get us or you know that we our ego's got to kind of protect itself so that's another way our shadow projects ourselves now we're going to have a look at some of the disguises that the shadow shows us so we can try and shine a light on these feelings in the next video about shadows, we'll be able to go into more depth about what to do next. What do we do and how do we shine a light on these feelings? So we spoke about the shadow projecting itself as superiority. Now, the shadow can definitely disguise itself as this when, um, when you're worried about being a failure, when you're worried about rejection, when you're worried that someone might not like the person that you truly are. And again, that's just a worry. Um, it's just a concern, it's just a fear that you have that someone might not fully understand, interpret, and um, enjoy your presence. So what ha happens is then you end up overdoing um, and almost trying to convince yourself that you are adequate enough and you are enough and you are worthy of their attention and their love, essentially. Injustice, so we spoke about how um, you are worried about why does this always happen to me? And the disguise of why does this always happen to me could be that you feel very sinful, that you feel that someone always blames you for something. So your direct response to the um, to the injustice is to blame someone else, is to redirect the responsibility elsewhere because you don't want to truly believe why this has happened to you or try to decipher why it's happened to you so the shadow is disguised in. Arrogance can be disguised um, really in quite a thought-provoking way. It can really disguise a lot of anger, which is interesting and a lot of deep-seated pains, a pain that's been residing deep within that really does want a light to be shone on it. Um, and that one, I know there are a lot of people who can relate to that feeling. I know there are a lot of people that can relate to that feeling of you know, feeling quite angry and feeling that they've got to put up this pretense and, and this facade of being 
someone that doesn't need other people, that doesn't necessarily um, thrive with certain people's attention. Defensiveness, so worrying about someone attacking you can be disguised, disguises the feeling of um, feeling quite unworthy or a weak person, so that fear again of judgment. It's also the fear that unless you defend yourself, you'll start attacking yourself. So the ego is trying to protect you from attacking yourself by attacking other people. Blame, blaming other people, moving away the responsibility is a way of your shadow disguising itself, disguises itself as you actually blaming yourself for something and your ego in that fear of judgment and hurt or pain and suffering makes you feel like you've got to redirect it in, in a different way, in a different path, in a different life. Idealizing others disguises itself as you being quite vulnerable, you wanting to be protected, to be saved, and it's your inner child, that part of you that um, wants to be nurtured and looked after. Prejudice, so judging someone by the colour of their skin, their race or anything else can be a disguise of your shadow worrying that you yourself are inferior, that you yourself are afraid of judgement or being judged. Jealousy can disguise itself as worrying that you are inadequate, um, that you are not enough, that uh, you might stray away from doing the right thing. And paranoia can disguise itself as deep-seated anxiety, so feelings that have not been dealt with yet, core issues that have not been looked at yet, and not been understood with compassion and love and forgiveness, then you can start to become very paranoid. So as you can see from these examples of the shadow, how it's projected and what the real underlying feelings could be, you can see that there's a lot of work to be done when we want to be the best versions of ourselves. I will let you know when the next video is up that will help you deal with what to do next with each of these feelings. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you a wonderful array of knowledge, something to definitely think about. As always, write these things down in a journal because the more you write them down, the more opportunity you give yourself to reflect on them and you never know, things may just start coming in, that intuition will start coming in and you yourself will be able to figure out how best to deal with it. The more we shine a light on our shadows, the better, lighter, happier people we become. Don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment on this video. Don't forget to share it with your friends and family because you'd never know who might need it the most right now. Until next time, bye.